Hi everyone, Julie Bark is here, Workplace Transformationalist. And I just wanted to come to you live, late night live. It's like 10 o'clock here in Chicagoland. But I just got done doing a video for our closed Facebook group, which you can definitely come and be a part of. It's our Child Care Business Success group here on Facebook. But I didn't want to leave you out of the picture, so I wanted to come to you with a video. And earlier this morning, I wrote an article about the need to save people and how that plays out in your child care program, especially when it comes to hiring decisions and how we manage and motivate our staff. So I put what I wrote in the description of this video so that you can read through that. But if the need to save people is something that you resonate with, I would love for you to give this video a thumbs up or a heart. And I'm just going to talk you through some key points and see who jumps on, if anybody jumps on here late night with me. And also, if you're listening to the replay, hey, Sherry, nice to see you here. Been seeing, I think I saw a video of yours recently. Great job. Um, but if you are listening to the replay as well, please make sure you still say hello and comment. And I uh, love that all of you. Hey, Kimberly, nice to see you on this page as well. I was just telling everybody here about our Child Care Business Success group on Facebook where they could come and join us for free over there. We just did a live video on my planner that I'm using for this year and provided everybody a link with that. You're welcome, Sherry. Good to have you. So today I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the need to save people. And I'll be very transparent. When I first set up my business, and this is going to pertain to owners on one level and directors on a whole other level. But when I first set up my business, it was a desire to have this model where people wouldn't leave um, because there was underlying fear that I didn't want to be alone with the endeavors I was taking on. So the fear was really guiding my business decisions. And whenever fear comes into the picture, it always crushes the vision. And if there's something you should write down, it's that fear crushes the vision. So anytime you're feeling the fear and you start incorporating it into your management style, the vision is collapsing. And we really need to keep that vision, which is the core piece, strong, healthy, growing and expanding every single day. So when we think about the need to save people, we see the potential in people. We see the potential in our staff. We see the potential in our parents, in the kiddos. And it seems to be a natural part of this business where you know, we're here to help people get to a whole new level, right? We're here to raise the future of the world. We're here to help families have healthy and productive children. We're here to have productive and effective staff in place. So, you know, it's part of our nature that we really want to see people succeed. But there's a fine line between wanting to see people succeed and the needing to save them, seeing the potential in them so much that we don't want to give up on them and we almost invest more in them than they're willing to invest in themselves. And I want to elaborate on this because when I first started a, a motivational speaking many moons ago, I was uh, I took on this position as um, coming in and doing programs for recovering drug addicts and alcoholics. And I would go and teach these programs, the power of our thoughts, our mindset, creating your vision for your life, all these different things. And I started hearing the stories that these guys went through, and it was all men in this facility, and they were fresh off of drugs and alcohol. And I started hearing their stories, and some of them came home to seeing their parents or their father who had just committed suicide. And all of these things stuck to my head, and you know, all these reasons as to why they couldn't succeed in life. And I really saw the potential in them. I'm like, oh, if only they could change this. If only they could see this. If only they would do this. And I really started going home at night thinking about these guys and their challenges and all the if only statements. And I really came to the point where I was um, being drained by all of their life situations. And I had a meeting with my executive director and he said something absolutely brilliant to me. And I approached him with the question, I'm like, how do you not take home everybody's challenges, all of their difficulties? How do you not want 
to save them, you know, because sometimes it's like they're helpless puppies and you just want to scoop them up, give them the love that they never got and save them. And you see it on one level with your staff, but when working with recovering drug addicts and alcoholics, I saw it on a whole different level. So the thing that he said that was absolutely brilliant was you've really got to recognize the point and how much are they willing to invest in themselves. And you don't invest more in them than they're willing to invest in themselves. And that means time thinking about their issues, thinking about their challenges, thinking about their problems, thinking about their life stories. So then I started looking at things with a different perspective in working with these clients. As I started looking and thinking to myself, how many steps are they willing to take forward, uh, to go forward? And when I recognize the steps, one, two, three, four steps, then I would say, okay, I'm gonna meet them four steps and really help them take their life to the next level. But so often, we're the ones, our directors and our owners, and especially we've got such caring, giving hearts, right? We are probably one of the most loving people in the world. You, you all are. And you've got these big, huge hearts. But often it can get us in trouble because we want to take step after step after step and give people chance after chance after chance after chance to do things differently. But then we often find, hmm, they're not really taking steps here. And then you ask yourself, well, what else is there that I need to be doing? And the biggest thing that you need to be doing is to recognize that your validation has to come from a very important place as a leader in this industry and to have uh, an enjoyable, happy life. And your validation has to come from a positive and productive, high-functioning team and not from how needed are you on a daily basis because we could implement a lot of different tools and strategies and childcare programs where we go in and transform the environment. And the biggest thing that happens is the owner or director gets lonely because their staff aren't approaching them every single day or every single minute or lined up at the door ready to ask a million questions when the owner or director walks right in. So we know how to make that stop. But often when we implement some of these tools and ideas that I have, we get to the point where the person doesn't know how to function because now they feel that they're no longer needed. So if people aren't needing them, what's their purpose? So please recognize and take some time to ask yourself, do I have a need to save people? And is this need deeply rooted in some fears that I have? And for me, it was the fear of being alone. It was the fear of not being needed. And those came into play with how I set up my business. And for our owners and our directors, it comes into play in the type of dysfunction you tolerate. So if you know a relationship is not energy enhancing to your vision in your childcare program, but yet you keep clients or you keep staff on board in spite of that, there's a reason why you're tolerating those behaviors in your life. And that's where you have to sit back and get a little clear on, hmm, why am I tolerating these things? Is it because it's coming from a needy place or a fearful place within myself? And chances are that answer is going to be a clear yes. So when you get to that place of yes, say, okay, now what do I need to do to get that need met somewhere else? So maybe you start becoming more masterful at being alone and you start going to a movie once in a while by yourself or you go and have dinner once in a while by yourself. Uh, somebody once made a comment, one of my girlfriends recently that says, Julie, I need your um, how to be alone training <laughs> because um, when I lost my husband suddenly um, and instantly uh, back several years ago, it was a huge life change and that was the first time in my life I was totally alone. Um, so start recognizing if the need is driving the decisions that you're making with your staff and your clientele. 
and then look to satisfy that need so you're not bringing that neediness into your workplace. And I know this is a little bit of a deeper topic, but if you're resonating with this, if you're getting the message, please give me an oh yeah. Uh, even if you're watching the replay of this, I do come back and look and read through the comments as I can. So I would greatly appreciate uh, anything that you have to say about the topic or any questions you have. Also, if you're loving this, we would love some hearts and some likes so that it shows up at the top of the feed for other people who would benefit from this video. But becoming clear on the needs that you are bringing into the workplace is critically important. And then the second piece to that is to recognize how else can I get these needs met so that you're not bringing that neediness into the workplace, managing your business by the fear of being alone and managing it by the vision, which has to be the leading force. It's got to be the guiding force. If you're interested, thank you, thank you for the hearts. Um, if you're interested in diving deep with me, we've got a fantastic event coming up March 22nd, 23rd, and 24th in Las Vegas. It's my new event, Create Your Dream Team Experience. And it's going to be everything from um, hiring to firing and creating a boatload of engagement in between. And I will post uh, in the comment section a link to that registration page, but the early bird discount goes away tonight. So if you're interested in joining me, please make sure you sign up. Uh, prior to midnight is when I think that they're pulling the, uh, the special code down. But um, I encourage you to come out and join me in Vegas so we can work on the transformation that you desire and most importantly that you deserve because how you do anything is how you do everything. So the changes that you make in your personal life are gonna overlap into your professional life. And the changes that you make in your professional life are most indeed going to overlap into your professional life. Hope I got that all covered and <laughs> going back and forth. So that's all I really wanna share with you tonight. And there's um, a longer text in the video description for this evening so that you can have some notes to reference. But please make sure that you recognize the neediness that you're bringing in because you will create and sustain a more happy workplace when the neediness gets taken out. And there's another saying that I wanna share with you that I once heard, and I forgot who I heard it from, but it's that you can't understand others' dysfunction until you understand your own. But so many of us are walking around like we're the staff therapist, trying to resolve everything for everybody else when we're not even really dealing with our issues. And this is why it's really important that we start at the very tippy top of the organization with our owners and our directors and understand what's the dysfunction that we're bringing into the picture and how do we grow and expand the vision while deflating the fears that we feel around bringing that to life and lead our team in the process of doing the same thing. So that's my hope for you and that's my desire and that's what I partner with childcare owners and directors to do. All right, I'll be coming back and reading through your comments. Hey Sally, nice to see you here. <laughs> Always good to have family on my videos. <laughs> but uh, have a fantastic evening, and I hope this tip has been helpful, and I will come back and read the comments. This is Julie Barkas, Workplace Transformationalist. I will see you all soon. All right, bye.